Hey, hey, welcome back to the Fox and Craig Show. Good morning. I hope y'all are doing great today and are healthy and happy. So today what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to break down three basic types of dogs or support animals um, that are that have ADA rules and regulations um, that you should know about or understand. We're going to talk about the service dog or a medical service dog, the therapy dogs, and of course the emotional support dogs. We'll break each one down, what they're for, and I even got a little chart that was provided to me courteous of the Guardian Angel Medical Service Dogs, which I included their link in the uh, description below if you want to go out and check them out. They can help you understand what you need to do to get a service dog, what are the requirements, and a lot more information about them. So let's go ahead and get started. You should about this time see my chart uh, should be showing up either on the right, probably on the right, uh, on the left, or over the top of my face. One of those things probably happened because um, I'm editing this video myself for the first time. So let's get started. First of all, allowed by ADA and federal law to enter into public establishments. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about businesses. We're talking about hospitals. We're talking about federal facilities that are open to the public, whether it be libraries, post offices, any facility that you go to, your service dog is allowed to enter. Um, Foxy never leaves my side um, when I'm in the hospital. She's in the hospital with me. Um, we stayed overnight, a couple nights in the hospital, three nights maybe, together. Um, so that's, that's just standard. Service dogs don't leave your side. They go anywhere you go. Therapy dogs. No, therapy dogs aren't by law allowed to be in public places by law. In other words, there can be establishments, if you have a therapy dog that says, no, you can't come in. Therapy is different, and we'll get into it in depth and a little bit more as we move through the list. And of course, emotional support dogs. Emotional support dogs are not by law allowed to be in every public facility. So the next one we look on the list, it says allowed by law to live with their disabled handler even in a no pet environment. So what that means, if you go to an apartment complex or you rent a house and they say no pets, doesn't matter, they cannot tell you no. By ADA law and federal law, they, you have to be allowed to rent that particular place. Um, if you have one, a service dog. Service dogs, like I said, they're, they're always with you, all, always by your side. Therapy dogs, no, they do not fall under that rule. And then, of course, you've got emotional support dogs. And yes, they do. If you have an emotional support dog, your dog is allowed by law to stay or, you know, live with you in your apartment or rented home or, or condo or whatever you rent, even if they say no pets allowed. And that's by ADA and the federal law. The next one is custom trained to mitigate a single person's visible or invisible disability. There's only one on the list that is personally trained to train for a particular um, issue that you may have. Uh, and that is the service dog, the medical service dog. So what is an invisible disability? Uh, can include PTSD, traumatic brain injury, uh, diabetic, seizure disorders, in her case, vertigo, anxiety. There's a lot of different things that these dogs are trained to do and, and handle. And they give you these warnings immediately so that you know something is happening and you can do what your countermeasures happen to be. The only dog that falls under this training 
is the medical or the service dog. Okay. The next one we have is must have the ability to tolerate different environments and people. And on this list, you'll see a service dog, obviously, because you go everywhere, so they must be able to, uh, you know, get along with the people, other people in the area, uh, other environments, loud, uh, soft. In fact, I, I remember we were at a church uh, speaking at an event, uh, at a church event that we were speaking at, and the first thing they asked me is, is she okay with loud noises? I was like, yeah, she, she's fine with loud noises, all that stuff. None of those things bother her, but to be honest, Foxy, the only thing bothers Foxy is actually thunder and lightning, but uh, that's it. Uh, also, your therapy dogs. Because the difference with a therapy dog, a therapy dog may be working with multiple patients, may be going from room to room. That's their job is to work with people and help them in their therapy. So they must be able to move from room to room. So they're trained to work with multiple people for certain issues. So, you know, whether it's helping them walk, helping them recover from something, um, therapy dogs fall in that category. And then, of course, emotional support animals, absolutely not. They, are, they don't have to have that ability. They can be barkers, they can be yappers, they can be whatever, but uh, they're not required to um, be able to tolerate those different environments. Uh, the next one we have is primarily provides emotional support uh, for their companion. The uh, only one that falls under that is pretty simple, the emotional support dog. That's, that's their main objective is to give that emotional support. And I'm sure a lot of you out there uh, that have pets, whether they be cats, dogs, guinea pigs, whatever, uh, they find that connection that does give them emotional support. But there are different levels of that emotional support. And we're talking about a higher level of emotional support that people need. And then, of course, um, the next and last one we have on the list is provide support to a wide variety of people. And in that, the only one that does that is the uh, therapy dog, because the therapy dog goes from room to room, works with multiple people, maybe at children's hospital, going in for different children to try to peak their energy or whatever the case may be, but that's what a therapy dog is designed for, to work with multiple people, uh, depending on their circumstances, and, and help those people with their therapy. So at that note, um, this finishes today's video, and Foxy and I want to thank you for stopping by and, and listening to me run my mouth. I really appreciate it. I would ask you as a favor, as Foxy would, uh, if you could, please like and subscribe to our videos. Um, the more subscriptions we get, uh, Google algorithms pick up, and then in turn, we get out to more veterans and more people. And as we move along in these videos, we're going to talk a lot more about how to get a service dog, um, you know, what processes do you go through. We're going to talk about working with your service dog after you have them, or her, him or her, and all sorts of other good stuff uh, on the veteran side. Of course, we have the music side too, and we'll talk about that in different videos. But again, thanks for coming by. Uh, leave your comments below on how I can get these videos better, and what you'd like to see, and maybe some questions or ideas for videos you'd like me to do. And Foxy and I will put them together as best we can, and try to get more information out to everybody. Um, again, the one thing I always like to do at the end of these videos, or at least I want to start doing, is thanking a couple organizations that have been involved in getting service dogs out to the veterans, and that is Life-Changing Service Dogs for Veterans, Guardian Angels Medical Service Dogs, and of course Team Foster as well who are out there trying to help save veterans' lives. And they're great organizations. I included all three links in the uh, comments below, and I also included a link to our website, uh, foxyandcraig.com. So again, thanks for stopping by. Take care, everybody. Have a great day or great evening or great wherever you're at and time. Thanks for stopping by.